This building behind me is the University of Trieste. And I'm here today because I want to tell you a story, a racing story. What does the adrenalinic, thrilling and sometimes dirty activity of racing have in common with a gorgeous campus that dominates a middle European city and is populated by freshers who can still dream of a brighter future and seniors who already lost hope and are starting to lose their hair? The answer is Formula SAE. Shoot, I'm late. I've got to go. Uh, yeah, whatever. Formula SAE is a collegiate international competition, which means students all over the world are building new race cars every year just to learn how to do it, how to manage scarce resources like time and money, and how to present their product to the market. As if studying was not enough of a pain already. Are you done? Yep. Oh, thank God. It was so long and boring, my hair grew in the waiting. Anyway, all he's saying is actually already on Wikipedia. Look at this. But you guys have Wikipedia too, so let's get down to the juicy bit. How fast are those things? What? Who's there? Of course, he's gone again. Anyway, they are bloody fast. These cars are made to compete in outcross events, so the aerodynamics are just insane. Just look at the grip and the reactivity of this single-seater from Modena. Aside from the undeniable skills of the driver, the downforce is evident even at low speeds. It definitely is a proper formula and it behaves as such. Also, look at this active wing on the Renteam Stuttgart 2018 Challenger. Formula SAE rules put very few constraints to aerodynamics, leading to extreme designs and performance. If you want to get Formula SAE-like lateral G-forces in a production car, you're not gonna spend less than 150 grand. And still, Formula SAE cars will go up to peaks of 2 Gs and more while traveling at less than 60 miles per hour, while on production supercars with stock tires you will hardly experience more than 1.5 Gs. Not bad, not bad. This makes driving Formula SAE cars unique. Come on, man, open up. Where are we going? Hi. Where are we going? Open the hatch, please. Open it, open it. Oh. Open the hatch, Oh, it's about time. Does it seem fair to you? I have a video to make. I ha- where, where is he going? Anyway, what about pure longitudinal acceleration? What you got? No, 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 no. Uh, about longitudinal acceleration. There's a timed drag race in every FSAE event, which means that cars are designed to accelerate fast too. I mean, look at that! Electric cars prove their supremacy in these races, since electric motors have a superior torque. Also, many designs require just a single gear transmission, which means no time loss in changing gears. And some teams are even running four-wheel drive cars by adopting wheel hub motors. There's an entirely separate league for cars designed to race without human drivers in them. Look at this AMZ car, for example. Does it seem slow? Well, maybe now, but it surely is fast at learning.
Oh, finally, that was rude, man. Oh, no, no, wait, it, that's not necessary. Please, <laughs> no. Oh, for sake. Oh. Is he gone? That guy is such an ass. I tried to explain to them that I'm working on an electric race car, but they can't help thinking about petrol. And then they drive around in a 20 years old Peugeot. Unbelievable. It's, it's the third time it happens, but you know, you don't reject a free haircut. I heard them say that if I don't trim my hair, I could be mistaken for an eco-socialist or something. Go figure. Well, I think this time it will cost me much more than a haircut. Remember guys, it's okay to have an opinion, but it must be an educated one. Anyway, there are technical and safety tests to pass, of course. But I didn't tell you the best part. The drivers are students as well, and we interviewed one of them. Hey. Ah. 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 Fuori dalla Formula SAE ho iniziato appena compiuti i 18 anni a correre con i go-kart e la mia specialità sono le gare endurance. Ci sono sicuramente le differenze, le dimensioni innanzitutto, di conseguenza anche i pesi. Dall'altro lato noi abbiamo una vettura elettrica, cambia l'erogazione della potenza, la differenza principale rimane che comunque il kart non ha alcun tipo di differenziale, non ha nessun tipo di elettronica, questo invece è un concentrato di elettronica. Quello che lo accomuna sicuramente è la trazione posteriore, questa vettura in cui sono seduto adesso ha un differenziale aperto, quindi in realtà le scodate sono all'ordine del giorno, quello che sembra lo rispecchia, è una vettura da corsa a tutti gli effetti, senti che vi è una tenuta non comune nelle macchine stradali c'è una reattività ben diversa e una potenza soprattutto nell'elettrico le accelerazioni 0-100 sono l'ordine dei 3 secondi noi ad esempio abbiamo partecipato come apripista alla 7 tornanti che è una gincana che si svolge sulle pendenze del monte Vondone non avendo comunque un motore paragonabile a un prototipo o a gruppi speciali comunque nel guidato riuscivamo a fare comunque la differenza dovuta al fatto di avere una massa quasi in influenza 240 kg all'incirca e comunque tanta potenza per uscire da, dal rallentamento. Le selezioni sono aperte a tutti i membri dei team, la macchina è di, di ogni ragazzo del team, ogni ragazzo ci mette il cuore e ogni ragazzo merita la possibilità di poter guidare. L'essere pilota sì, da un lato è un divertimento ma è anche una responsabilità perché non puoi rischiare di mandare in fumo tutto quello che è stato fatto dal team. Il dipartimento, la facoltà che viene scelta non è mai un problema. Le aree all'interno sono molteplici, gli ingegneri, io col mio consiglio è non da matricole perché purtroppo vi è un gap di conoscenza che dopo il primo anno viene colmato. Il requisito fondamentale è la passione nel motorsport e nel lavorare in gruppo perché la Formula 6 è molto gruppo che non è solo quello di Igor, ma è possibilmente quello della Formula 6. Qualcosa che ora ti sembra lontano, magari domani ti sembra già molto ravvicinato. Lontano a volte mi sembra Matteo in pista, però poi li prendo la scia e li recupero in un attimo. Il consiglio che viene sempre dato, ma che effettivamente invecchiando come me si, si riscontra, è inseguite le vostre passioni. Non fatevi trasportare, decidete voi dove andare. Tu hai una passione, come me nel mio caso, ho una passione per il motorsport. Non ho detto, ma sì, vediamo se la vita mi proporrà qualche opportunità nel motorsport. L'opportunità te la devi creare, l'opportunità sta nel volerti mettere in gioco, mettersi in gioco vuol dire comunque dedicare del tempo, dedicare della passione, dedicare dell'energia. Se si ha questi requisiti la Formula 6 sicuramente ti darà tantissimo, ti regalerà un sacco di emozioni, un sacco di bellissimi momenti. Non vuol dire che non ci saranno delle difficoltà perché la macchina ti farà sempre impazzire, però è una difficoltà che l'accetterai col sorriso, ti renderà sempre più forte e con uno spirito sempre migliore. Grande, grazie.
after they rescued me, I went back to the university. This is the Unity S racing team office. Here we designed the URT B1, our first car. Almost all of it. Electric motors, aerodynamics, suspensions, braking system, transmission. But while I'm recording this video, we only have renderings because it was our first project and we didn't have funds to build it. Instead, we took part to the so-called static race, where a jury evaluates our project from the bare technical solutions up to the business plan. We even made it to the second place in the design event, which is the only thing that matters to car enthusiasts and engineers. Some say that we phrase it like that just because we got fourth out of four in the overall standings. But we'll drop that. Technicalities apart, we will have students as drivers too, of course, so we are already training our driving skills on simulators and go-karts. And to make it spicier, we created the Formula University Virtual Championship, where we already raced against other Formula SAE teams. That has been such an unbelievable battle that it deserves its own series of videos to be told. It seems like a lot of good fun, doesn't it? But it's also a lot of hard work and a lot of long hours. It requires meetings, learning, teaching, and proper teamwork. Despite that, we are happy to do it, because we are passionate about it. There is one more problem that I didn't mention, though. We live in a beautiful seaside town, but there is no hinterland. Which means that while the biggest regatta in the world, and I literally mean it, takes place here, there's not even a proper car track nearby, so we have to drive one hour to get to the nearest one. Still, our city has a wonderful history of motorsport. In 1930, Enzo Ferrari was here to see his newborn Scuderia Ferrari take its first victory ever. The driver was Stazio Nuvolari, who drove on this street, through these very corners sideways, and set a new record. Later, during the century, Jochen Rind, may he rest in peace, took part to the very same hill climb race. He stood right here. In the 60s, they started calling this race La Monza in Salita, the hill climb Monza, due to the incredible average speeds. This is what made this race special and why it attracted so many famous drivers from all over the world. Every year, it was a real day of celebration with thousands of spectators on the balconies and along the roadside, no matter if it was a sunny or rainy day. You could feel the passion on the streets Hear the sound of the cheering crowd, the piercing roar of the engines crackling in the air, while an entire city stopped for one day to celebrate the heroes of the steering wheel and their fearless four-stroke hearts on the everyday streets that we call home. The streets where many like me learn to drive and to dream. Basically, a Monaco Grand Prix on the Adriatic Sea. We are the Unity S Racing Team and we are eager to write more and more pages of this wonderful history. Wanna join us? No, no, listen, 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 I didn't, I didn't have the time. Non mi ricordo le parole. Oh! <ride> non mi ricordo! Eh, non, più zoom del cuscino go, però li filmo. Sono da dentro a Covaccia, eh? 
e non, ci, non mi ha rapito per davvero signor giudice <ride> Io non c'entro, non c'è. Non sei la mia madrelingua.